service continues on page 185 of your Green Book of Alternative Services, page 185. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. And may you fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 365. Your son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you had handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as in also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 4, beginning on page 707 of your Green Book. Psalm number 4, on page 707 of the Green Book. We'll say the psalm responsively by the half verse.
Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. By the mercy of me, hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship my idols and run after false stars? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call on the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your head. Offer the appointed sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. And lift out the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness into my heart. More oil and grain and wine and oil and grease. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, may be in my love and safety. And together we pray. Faithful Defender, do not let our hearts be troubled, but fill us with such confidence and joy that we may sleep in peace and rise in your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sins is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. They were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my side and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. sinners, as God's beloved to God's own beloved, 
and in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So there are many central theological truths in the Christian tradition. One is that Jesus Christ was present at creation alongside the Father and the Holy Spirit. Let us make mankind in our image, as we read in Genesis. Another is that we meet Jesus here in the sacrament of the altar, in the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, the Mass. And a third is that you and I are children of God. Now, for many people to hear the phrase, children of God, might make our eyes glaze over, as it's one of those phrases that us clergy types absolutely love to use. And to be frank with you, one could argue that the phrase is overused because it causes many people to scoff or roll their eyes at the person using the phrase. And frankly, with you, it may seem comical to think of you and I and humanity as children of God, especially if one knows the history of our salvation. Sure, we were lovingly created on the sixth day, but it went downhill from there. Not only did Eve take a bite of that apple, causing our downfall, and another central theological truth, a theological concept known as original sin, but not long after that, in Genesis 6, we read of God's frustration with humanity, to put it mildly. After feeling sorry for creating humanity, he decides to hit the giant reset button with a flood. Although he is frustrated with humanity, he sees that there is one righteous person, Noah. And so he decides to keep Noah and his family around, as Noah has found favor in the Lord's sight. The flood comes, and the flood goes. And eventually, at the end of it, God makes a covenant with Noah and us down to this day that he would not do that again, and that there would be a sign. Each time we see a rainbow, we would be reminded of God's covenant, God's faithfulness to us. And down through the ages, he has kept his promise to be faithful, even when we were not faithful to him. The Hebrew scriptures, my friends, are littered with stories of humanities and the Hebrew peoples failing to be faithful to God. From the whining of the exiled Hebrews, to them trying out other gods because God, Yahweh, as he was known, wasn't responding to their needs. And yet, through all of that, God remained faithful to us for reasons passing human understanding. God remained faithful to us. Imagine that with me for a moment, hearing the stories of the people of Israel running away, not being faithful, frustrating the living with Jesus out of God, and yet God remained faithful God remained so faithful that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to not only let us have a closer glimpse of what God is like, for remember, Jesus Christ is part of the holy and undivided trinity, but also to defeat sin and death and to make us children of God to, by adoption, and by grace. Okay, so 1 John, our reading from the epistles this morning, talks about being a child of God, for that is what we are. But how does this central theological truth help me in my daily life? It goes without saying that being reminded that you are a child of God is helpful, especially in the dark times where it seems that that darkness that you find yourself in surrounds you on every side. And when there is seemingly no light in the situation, 
when you are convinced that there is no light, when you are convinced that no one cares, and when you are convinced that you are trapped. Being remembered that somebody loves you, being reminded that you are a beloved child of God, can be helpful. But I also want to point out this day that there is another facet that I think might be helpful as we live the Christian life on this here mortal coil. Where the rubber hits the road is that you and I should look at the other as a beloved child of God. No less worthy of the love of God than you. This is one of the ways that you and I can follow the second of those great commandments that Jesus taught us. To love thy neighbor as thyself. I get that this is a heck of a lot easier said than done, because as I like to say, people get a people. Or to put it another way, people are messy beings. And it's hard to remember this idea that they're worthy of my love and compassion, especially when they do things that irk me. Like tell me, I should be at a meeting an hour away and forget to tell me that the meeting's been canceled until somebody else at that location wonders what the heck you're doing there. And that definitely didn't happen to me this week. Yet, my friends, that is the vocation that we and our baptism have been called into. Remember, as part of our baptismal vows, our godparents, or even us, depending, promised to, quote, seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. But exactly how do I do that? Especially when people are going to people, and they sometimes drive me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, as the old commercial goes. <laughs> Well, my friends, as 1 John 3 teaches us, it's all about abiding in God, focusing on God. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, but as we do that work, we are not alone as we do that. For Jesus has said in, that I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And Jesus has also sent his Holy Spirit, the guide, the comforter, the advocate, to remind us of that central theological truth. Nobody said that walking that good road, nobody said that living the Christian life was easy. Nobody said that loving your neighbor was going to be easy, especially as people get a people. But when we abide in God, when we spend time with him in prayer, meditating on the word of God, receiving him at the altar, when we live into that vocation of being children of God, sin, the things that we do to break our relationship with God is undone because we are focused on him. To abide in God means to seek after him in all things, to seek to spend time in his presence, as I said. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make his wretched treasure, writes Stuart Townsend in the song that we would have sung this morning. We, you and I, have been given a great gift of eternal life. In Jesus Christ's life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Now that we have been given that great gift of grace and of mercy, you and I are to live our vocation as children of God and show forth that grace, mercy, and love to others as we have first been shown that grace, mercy, and love to others. Because we have been loved and will continue to be loved all measure, by all measure by God who sent us Jesus Christ to not only let us see what he is like, but to defeat sin and death in order that we may have abundant life and to make us children of God.
it is now our duty and our vocation, our calling to live out this love of the world, showing forth that love to others as we have first been loved. May God bless us the peace, the grace, and the patience to do this work in all times and in all places. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand with me and turn to page 188 of your green book. Page 188. And say with me the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to stand, sit, reveal as is your own custom for prayer. Living Christ, Crucified and risen, be gracious and answer when we call on you. Here are the prayers we bring for your people. You came to bring abundant life to your people. Hear our prayers for the nations of the world. We pray for all countries torn apart by war and civil <coughs> strife, for communities ravaged by poverty and disease. Through your risen power, make us strong to confront injustice, that we may be your witnesses in the world. Living Christ, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You came as the Messiah to save your people from their sins. Hear our prayers for the church, its clergy, and people. We pray for those who have strayed from your ways, for the newly baptized and all who turn to you. Through your risen power, call us to repentance and wipe out our sins, that we may be your witnesses in the world. Live in Christ Jesus, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You made your home with the despised and the outcast. Hear our prayers for the community in which we live. We pray for all who are forgotten, ignored, neglected, or unheard. For our families, our friends, our neighbors, and ourselves. Through your risen power, teach us to live in love for one another, that we may be your witnesses in the world. Living Christ Jesus, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You can bring healing and wholeness to your people. Hear our prayers for all who are in need. We pray for those who are lonely or unhappy, those in grief or despair, for those in pain or sickness. We pray for wholeness and healing in the lives of Dave, Brian, Al and Ruth, Ian, Matt and Fred, for the dying and all who care for them. Through your risen power, touch our hearts to respond to the needs of your wounded ones, that we may be your witnesses in the world. Living Christ Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
You suffered death and rose again to bring new life to all your people. We remember your faithful servants of every age. We give thanks for your disciples of every generation, for all whose lives have borne witness to your risen power. Fit us, like them, to be your witnesses in the world, and bring us with all the saints into the joy of your eternal presence. Living Christ Jesus, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. Page 191. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to the table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your reign. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share with one another a sign of that peace. Hymn number 232.
the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew his gift of life within us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Eucharistic prayer number three, found on page 198. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise. For the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who has taken away the sin of the whole world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. 
We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your side in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Page 211. And now, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sentence number 8 on page 213. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share with your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. My friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
come to the table. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you.
author of life divine. In the breaking of the bread, we know the risen Lord. Feed us always in these mysteries, that we may show your glory to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand and turn to page 214 in your brief. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working within you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and always. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for a moment. Are there any announcements for the good of the parish? Don't worry, I have a few. <laughs> as soon as I figure out what I'm doing with my life. Um, I realized on um, last Sunday in the midst of trying to figure out how to do this without uh, Deacon Larry, um, I forgot about uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Um, and so um, last week we had a few birthdays. Um, I believe uh, Deacon Larry uh, was one of them. Uh, as he slinks back in the corner, <laughs> as well as Deacon Jennifer. Um, and my apologies for missing you last week. And then this week is also uh, Delia Alexander. I don't think she's here. Hi, Delia, sorry. <laughs> that awkward moment when it becomes very obvious you don't know their name. <laughs> my apologies, Delia. Um, so why do we pray? Loving God, bless your servants whose birthdays and anniversaries you remember this day. Give them joyful hearts as they celebrate and remember all who have brought riches to their lives and be with them over the coming year and forever. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, and just one other thing I did forget, uh, Joan Sheffield celebrated an anniversary um, on Friday, um, and you're 56. Congratulations. Yeah. Please do join us in the hall for uh, coffee and goodies, um, as well as a special presentation. Um, and any other notices that um, you need to know about, please do take your bulletin home with you. Uh, they are a reminder of um, what, what is going on in this parish, and it's quite a busy place, uh, especially in these next couple of weeks, so this is good. Um, but before we do that, I do want to uh, acknowledge again uh, that at uh, coffee hour today, we are celebrating and giving thanks for the ministry of the Reverend Larry Atkins and his wife Anne. Uh, Deacon Larry has officially retired. He is no longer up here. He is somewhere in the congregation. <laughs> we give thanks to God for their life, their work, and their ministry among us. And we pray that God will continue to work in them, um, giving us and God many more years of fruitful ministry uh, just in a different way in this place. Thank you so much. Our closing hymn for this morning's service is hymn number 524.
This service has ended. Our service has just begun. Let's go forth to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.